Oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's good to see everybody out tonight. I'd like to make our, Mount Vale, let's make our guests and visitors welcome if you're with us tonight. We're so glad you're here. So glad those that are watching via fast, Facebook, Facebook. I'm in the fast mode already. <laughs> Woo, I tell you what, it's only been what? What's the date? The fourth? Fifth? More than five. Five days. We just got just 15, 16 more left, right? Is my math right? 16. 16 more days left. So praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Right. Roll real quick announcement. I know we're doing announcements different, but I got to hit one because it, it, we changed it later. Uh, the men's uh, fellowship has been listed as the 16th, but we got to move it to the 23rd due to the fast. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but let's do this. Let's uh, let's stand for the reading of God's word tonight. Amen. As Brother Henry's coming, he's going to read the word. Praise the Lord, church. Eight days of fifth day, number five in the Bible means grace. Anybody need any grace tonight? We all do, don't we? Praise the Lord. All right, I'm going to read here a couple of scriptures out of Matthew 24, starting in verse 3. The Bible says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of the coming of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many, and he shall, and you shall hear rumors of wars, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be phantoms and pestilence, earthquakes and diverse places. And all these things are the beginning of sorrows, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And then verse 13, but he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Hey, you can't turn on the news nowhere right now unless you hear about war. And uh, thousands of our men and women are being sent over by right now. Folks, this thing does have to come to an end. This, hey, it didn't happen last night. It ain't happened today yet, but it could happen before we get home tonight. It, I, I believe this word's fulfilled. And I believe we're the generation that's going to see it come to pass. But... They had a five point something earthquake in Mexico. Australia, thousands and thousands of animals were burned up over our people, people dying and everywhere. And all you got to do is look, this Bible's been fulfilled word for word. It says not one jot, not one tittle will not come to pass. So, folks, we need, we need to be ready. And here we are fasting 21 days. And you know, how many of our family, how many of my family members is lost and undone? How many people we work with, how many people we go to school with is lost and undone? Folks, he's coming back just like he said he would. They are giving and marrying and drinking and having Murray, like it says Noah did in the days. And they entered into the ark and they didn't even know. They just they, We hear it, but we don't think nothing about it. It's time we took it for granted. It's going to happen. It's going to take place. Amen. So if we get ready to worship, if we get ready to pray, the Bible says, Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I draw all men unto, you, unto me. Amen. That's what the Word says. Hey, we worship this morning. Let's worship tonight. Amen. Pray, give him a hand. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a praise. Amen. For his work. Amen. Hey, it's good to see everybody out tonight. Hey, if you're a guest and a visitor, there's a lady walking around with a word shirt that says, ask me. If you got any questions, what's going on tonight, uh, please see her. She'll help you out. And if you haven't stopped by our welcome center, please stop by that tonight. Uh, 
Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And right after we pray, you can be seated. We've got a special little thing before we get into worship. So let's invite God into the house tonight. Amen. Father, we come to you tonight, God, giving you thanksgiving and praise. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for your mercy and grace. We thank you for what you're doing here, Father Lord. We thank you for the men and women who have come out to worship your name and gathered up to God to hear your word, Father Lord. Lord, we ask you to move right now upon our service tonight, God. Anoint the singers and musicians as they lead us into worship, God. Anoint our pastor as he brings forth the word, God. Anoint the word. Let it go forth and do its work tonight, Father Lord. Lord, we're asking you, God, to inhabit the praises of your people and do mighty acts and mighty wonders and mighty miracles in this place tonight, Father Lord. And we ask it in your name, Jesus. And everybody said, amen. You may be seated just for a moment. Sister Adelie's coming. I'm going to give you a little uh, history if I get it right. And, and, and if I'm not, somebody correct me. But this, she gave this speech in the 4-H class, I believe, if I understand right. And she had to pick a topic. And they, the topic she wanted to talk about was Jesus. And uh, the teacher said, well, you can do that, but I don't think you'll find enough information to talk about him for two minutes. Well, she fooled them. Amen. And she not only fooled them, but she won the school, and you're going to the county thing. Is that right? And she's going to bring the speech that she done. Who is Jesus, and what did he do for me? Jesus Christ is the Son of God that had a really important job. Jesus has helped me and my family through so many things. He can help you too. There's no exact date of Jesus' birth, but we do know that he was born in Bethlehem. Christians celebrate his birthday each year on December 25th. Jesus' parents are Mary and Joseph. Jesus had four brothers named James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. That was his only family. He and his family were Jewish. Jesus learned the word of God and then started preaching. By 12 years old, he was teaching in a temple. He did have struggles, one of them being dying for other people. Jesus mostly focused on teaching the word of God. He was also a carpenter, which is someone that builds things out of wood. He had a hard time with people that didn't like him and dying on the cross. Jesus accomplished things like letting us enter heaven, teaching, being a religious leader, driving out demons, healing the sick, raising the dead, and even walking on water. Jesus will always be remembered because of what he did. Jesus inspires others to come to God and follow his word. Jesus is a safe and amazing person. So if you ever are feeling down or being made fun of, know that he's on your side. And we don't know when he'll come back. It could be any day, any minute, any time. But no matter what, he's with you. That ought to stir something. That ought to stir something in your spirit to praise the Jesus she's talked about. The one that can still save, the one that still heals, the one that still delivers, the one that still set free, the one that said he would never leave you nor forsake you. He said, he, my Lord, let's just take a moment before we get into our singing and worship God with everything we got. Woo, my, 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 that, my. That ought to make you want to come to the front and lift up holy hands and give a shout and give a clap offering and give a wave offering. I like what she said. He come to die that I might enter into heaven and I got nothing else to praise him about. I can praise him because my name's been written down in the Lamb's book of life.
felt alone in your life. One time or another, you have felt like you were all alone. You felt like there was no one there, that you, everybody has left you. They have forgotten about you. Everybody has turned their back on you. But there is one. He said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Amen. So you're never alone. No matter how you feel, no matter how long you feel, there's always someone. There's a God in heaven that's never going to leave you. Amen. Even in your darkest times, he's always there for you. Even when he feels like he's a million miles away, I have felt that way before. I felt like he, even God was a million miles away, but he's always there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.
your spirit it lives within me so i will walk in your peace your spirit it lives within me my victory my victory your spirit it lives within me so i will walk in your peace your spirit lives within me my victory my victory your spirit I may have mentioned this before, but this is a song that I listened to at a time where I felt like that I was all alone, that I felt like that there was truly no one there, that I was, it was in a dark time in my life, and I listened to this song over and over and over again, because I needed to be reminded that I am not alone, and you may feel like even tonight, as you sit here, stand here, as we sing this song, that you may feel like that you are alone. But I'm here to tell you, don't let the enemy try to deceive you and try to lie to you and to let you know that there was no one there for you. Don't let him lie to you. Because he tried to lie to me and make me feel like that, that what's the point? What's the use? But there is someone there. There is a God in heaven that is always there for you. Always there. He's always there to comfort you. He's always there to hold you. I, 
I'm a, I'm a, I've said this before, I'm a very visual person. And there's times that I have literally felt like that I could just literally crawl up in the lap of God. And I just wanted him just to literally just hold me, like put his arms around me and just sit there and just hold me because I needed, I needed to be comforted, comforted. And you may feel like that tonight. You may feel like that you need someone to comfort you, to hold you, to let you know that it's all going to be okay. We're going to sing this song again. And if that's you, I want you to just let the words of this song minister to you and let you know, remind you that you are not alone. My victory, my victory. 
somebody. Give the Lord a praise. Amen. Amen. Wow. I like what Sister Buffy was saying. Jesus said he would never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. He said even to the end of the age, even to the end of time. I thought about that, and, I, and, and sometimes you get them little light bulbs that go off in your head. And I thought about that. Even when I face death and step over into eternity, he said he'd never leave me. Amen. And even when I step over into the realm of eternity, he said he would present me before the Father. He didn't even leave me when I'm standing in the throne room. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's going to continue to pray. Well, let's do this. If you've been through a valley and you've went through some things, and through it all, sometimes we don't know if we're by ourselves or not. But when you come out on the other side, you realize you are not by yourself. Amen. Let's do this. If you've ever been there and God has brought you through something, give him a big praise tonight. Amen. Give him a big shout. Because I like the one part of that song. He says, it's my victory. Come on now. I know he helps you in your victory, but it becomes personal when it's my victory. When he brought me through the valley of the shadow of death, when he brought me through the fiery furnace, when he brought me out of the mouth of the lion's den, when he brought me out of everything the devil thrown at me, it's my victory. Good. Great. Praise the Lord. Woo. I got to move. Praise the Lord. Ushers, get ready. Praise the Lord. Is there coming? Turn to your neighbor say, neighbor. I'm glad you made it tonight. Praise the Lord. I'll, you did say it with a smile, didn't you? Because they won't believe it if you didn't say it with a smile. If you didn't smile at them again, say, neighbor, I'm glad you made it tonight. Amen. Amen. Hey, you could have been anywhere else. Come on now. Hey, some laying in hospital rooms or some laying in nursing homes. There's some laying in front of the TV watching football when they should be in the house of the God. I said that out loud, didn't I? And I like football. Don't get me wrong. I watched it until I had to leave, okay? Until I had to be here preaching to myself, I guess, guess. But, hey, I got this thought for you. If you're watching via Facebook and live streaming, would you not hate to be where you're at and Jesus show back up and you could have been in his house? Ooh, now I ain't going to get no offering. I understand. I understand. Let's stand. We'll, we'll, we'll receive our tithes and offering tonight. Amen. How many know that Super Bowl Sunday's coming up pretty soon? But I got news for you. Every time you come into the house of God, it's a Super Bowl Sunday. Come on now. It's super because Jesus showed up. It's a super because I can't help it. I ain't going to hush. It's super because the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is in this place. It's super because my name's been written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Every Sunday ought to be Super Sunday to a Christian. Amen. I said I was going to hush. Now I am. Let's pray before I get going. Father, we come to you tonight, Lord, giving you thanksgiving and praise. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for the men and women who have come out, God. God, we thank you, God, for all that you're doing in this house. God, we thank you for the move of your spirit already in this place, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, that through you we can have victory over this world. Through you we can have victory and enter into the kingdom of heaven, Lord. And, Lord, we ask you right now to take the tithes and the offerings as your people prepares to bring it tonight, Father God, unto you, Father Lord. We ask you to bless them, bless the gift and the giver, God. Bless the tithes, bless the offering, multiply for the use of your kingdom in this place, Lord. And we ask it in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Welcome to Mount Bell Church, a healing church for a hurting world. My name is Lisa, and from Pastor T.H. Farrell and from the staff at Mount Bell, we would like to wish each of you a happy and blessed New Year. <laughs> we are so glad you are here. If you are a visitor or guest, we welcome you to our church. Our corporate 21 day of prayer and fasting begins January the 1st. The church will be open at 6 p.m. nightly for prayer. Join us as we pray and fast. We are expecting a mighty move of God this year. Starting in January, there will be a new members class. 
The Connection classes will be offered on the first, second, and third Sunday of each month at 4.30 p.m. in the Young Adult Classroom. This is for ages 13 and up. You are encouraged to attend all three classes. On the first Sunday, the topic will be what we believe in as a church. The second Sunday, the topic is who we are. And then, and then the third Sunday, your connection profile will be completed. Next, the Senior Adult Ministry is calling all seniors. Pastor Jesse and Melissa Youngblood are excited to announce the January 2020 launching of SWAT, Seniors with a Testimony for ages 50 and up. The first SWAT monthly luncheon will be Wednesday, January the 15th at 11 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. They want to see you there. Saturday, February the 1st will be the annual workers and leadership meeting for all workers, leaders, and ministers. Breakfast will be served at 8 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall, and the meeting is to follow promptly at 9 a.m. in the main sanctuary. If you do anything in this church, you should be at this meeting. The ladies' ministry will start holding a monthly meeting. Monday, January the 27th at 6.30 p.m. will be January's meeting. All ladies are welcome to come and bring a finger food. And let me tell you, the ladies know how to have fun. Also, the ladies' ministry will start selling tickets in January for this year's Valentine's Day banquet. The banquet will be held on Saturday, February the 8th at 5 p.m. this year. Tickets are $25 per couple. See a leading lady or the connection desk to purchase your tickets. Mark these events on your calendar. We hope you will make plans to attend one or all of these events. To stay connected, be sure to like and follow us on Facebook. Here you will find live streaming of our services as well as slide reminders for these events as well as others. Visit us on our church website and follow us on Instagram or just simply ask. We're saving you a seat. Until next time, God bless. morning we shall see Jesus in the air, calling out to you and me, joy is ours to share, for the church in there will be where the sun shall rise, and for the jewelry of the rain is not, oh what to me, oh what shall be, don't have me more if we all shall songs, amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. How many like the old songs tonight? Amen. I like the old songs. Praise the Lord. Good to see you in the house of the Lord tonight. Reach down, pick up your Bible. I'm trying to figure out where we're going to turn to. We are turning to the book of Luke. So good to see you in the house of the Lord. Let's give all of our guests and visitors a good warm welcome. So good to see Brother Larry and Sister Carolyn with us. Amen. And uh, Sister Joey over there, she slipped off. She don't even know I'm talking about her over there. 
Amen. Good to see you and everybody. And Hey, you know what? This is a place of belong. Amen. Everybody's welcome here. All right? We love everybody, don't we? Hey, if y'all love me, you love anybody, right? Praise the Lord. Amen. Luke chapter 18. Good to see you in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. Just want to talk to you a little bit. Uh, it was a little rough this morning. We had a little message on holiness, didn't we? And uh, it didn't hurt you. It seemed like it helped you. I believe more of you come back than normal. Amen. Well, it's a good thing. Amen. Uh, let's stand for the reading of God's word. Can we please? Good to see each and every one of you out and represented. Man, what a crowd on Sunday night. This is awesome. Praise the Lord. Amen. Isn't it good? Let's give God a good praise. Amen. Amen. They say the church is going down. I tell you right now, the church is going up, man. It's going up. Amen. It won't be long as it has been. Amen. We'll be, we'll be singing in the Holy Ghost. Amen. How the heavens will ring. Luke 18. And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not faint. Saying, there was, a, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. There was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. I have a dear friend of mine. I love him. I mean, I love him like, uh, like a brother. And uh, he says, just pray one time and forget about it. But look at what the scripture said. It said, it, look what it said. It, it said, though I fear not God, nor regard man. Because she keeps on coming. You know, sometimes you just got to keep on praying. You can't quit. You just got to keep on keeping on. Amen. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Stretch your hand toward me and pray with me, for me tonight. Father, we bless the name of the Lord tonight. We're so thankful, God, to be in the house of the Lord. We're so thankful that our names have been written in the Lamb's book of life. Thankful, Lord God, tonight. For each and every one that's come out tonight, Lord, at the very beginning of this 2020, Lord, we want to be those that are found in the faith. We want to be those that are praying and those that are persevering in prayer. And God, my prayer tonight is that you anoint me for the next few moments of time, your son and servant. Touch my throat, touch my lungs, and God, help me to communicate unto this people, Lord, your word. And we give you praise, honor, and glory. And everybody said, shake somebody's hand before you sit down and say, you need to keep the faith now. Praise the Lord. Jesus is talking. We've been talking on Wednesday night about prayer, amen, and the importance and the significance of prayer. And I want to kind of just bleed some of that over into tonight, if you will. Uh, I'm going to finish up my uh, message. I only got one-third of my message, and the Holy Ghost fell in here Wednesday night. We didn't get to finish up our message. But uh, we're talking on praying and talking on keeping the faith. Amen. Here's the thing that you got to understand is this right here. If you'll stay in the faith, amen, uh, I, I believe this. You know, I, I had somebody come to me one time. They said, do you really believe you can lose your salvation? I said, no. I said, I don't really believe you can lose it. I said, because if I lost it, I wouldn't know when, I le when it left me. But if I stop uh, if I stop serving the Lord and I stop reading the Word and I stop praying and I stop coming to church, amen, I didn't lose it. I forfeited it. Come on, somebody. Amen. And I believe that with all my heart. Amen. Listen, I want you to understand the, the prerequisite to heaven is to be in the faith. And we must keep the faith. Where does faith come from? Faith comes by hearing. By hearing the Word of God. Amen. And I want you to understand if you come to church, amen, sooner or later the Word of God will find you out. The Word of God will draw you in. The Word of God will pull you in closer to God. It's what it's designed to do. Amen. And, and for you and I, amen, we need to keep the faith in 2020. Amen. I, listen to me. I want you to understand Jesus is not just something I do on Sundays and Wednesdays. Amen. Uh, Jesus, is, Jesus is our life. He's everything. In him was life and the life was the light of men. Amen. And for you and I, amen, it's a relationship between us and God. In verse 1 he said, and he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Prayer is the single most important thing that you and I do on a daily basis. A lot of people have went by the wayside because they stopped praying. If you stop talking to your spouse, how long will you be married? Amen. 
Hey, have you ever noticed this? Can I tell on the fellas? Listen, when the woman is upset, now y'all don't, don't tell the women I said this, okay? But when the woman is upset, she is talking. Thank you, Ricky don't have a wife. That's the reason he can say that. He can say that. <laughs> He's the only brave man in here that don't have a wife. <coughs> but can we just come together on this? When the woman is upset, she's saying something. And she's got a whole lot to say. And, and, and watch this. When the man is upset, what does he do? Don't say nothing, does he? We become Elijah and we go into the cave. And we won't talk. I mean, I told somebody here a while back, I told a lady, I said, do not go in that cave and drag him out. I said, leave him in there. I said, he's processing. I said, and when he gets processed, he'll come on out and he'll talk to you. Amen. But if we don't have communication between the spouses, amen, between our husbands and our wives, if we don't communicate to each other, eventually the, uh, eventually the relationship will begin to suffer and then it will begin to separate. Amen. And it's the same thing with God. God is calling to the church. And he said, I want to spend time with you. Amen. You, you, you remember when you first fell in love? You, you remember that? Uh, it was long distance back then. I'd call Norma until I went broke. Just so I could hear her talk to me a minute. And I didn't have the money, so I had to borrow money to call her sometime. I'd call her on the pay phone and I'd run out of quarters trying to call. And you, and, 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 and you know what? And, and there was no obstacle too great for you when you first fell in love with your spouse. It was going to happen. You was going to make it happen. You was going to spend time with them. You was going to talk to them. Amen. And see what God is calling back to the church and he's saying to us tonight. He said, I want you to spend time with me. It's not about a grocery list. And Lord, help me to fix all these other problems. It's about getting in the presence of of a living God. He already knows what you need before you ask him. Just get in his presence. Somebody ought to give him a little praise right there. Prayer is simply communicating with God. First Timothy 2 and 8, I will therefore let men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. If you just started serving the Lord, learn, learn this quick. Stay on your knees. Listen to me. Can I tell you something? Can, can we just slow down just a minute, just a second? Can I tell you that prayer is hard work? Can I tell you that? Can I tell you that every time that you get ready to go into prayer, that everything starts to happen? The phone starts ringing, the doorbell starts ringing. Amen. The kids get in a fight, the dog and the cat get in a fight. Something's going, and the enemy is always fighting prayer because he knows and he understands that if you and I can get in that closet and steal away with God, that we come out of that place more like God and less like us. Amen. Luke 18, 2 and 3 said, There was a city, in a city, a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man, and there was a widow in the city. And she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. Look at the situation. The situation was hopeless. Because she could get political uh, clout against him to twist his arm to make him help her. And she couldn't even appeal to him that God would judge him if he didn't judge correctly. Her circumstances was hopeless. Can I, can I make you understand tonight that there is no hopelessness in God? Do you know that even in death there's hope? Amen. Do you know and understand, amen, that what the world says is hopeless, God specializes in those things thought impossible. When we pray, we must not focus on the problem, but we need to focus on the problem solver. Amen. We come in, and you know what we do? We'll go to God like we're going to a banker, and we'll say to God, well, this is what my credit score is. This is how good I've been over here. This is how good I've been, and, and this is what I need. It don't work like that. I want you to understand when we come to God we must come to God and believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him tonight amen amen it may not look like it may not look like the people you're praying for that God's even moving but I promise you he is moving tonight I promise you he's hearing tonight Jesus said we were to pray and not to faint Jesus was saying to you and I to continue to pray. Uh, 
uh, when I get to heaven, I hope the only cat I see is the line of the tribe of Judah. Listen, I hate's a strong word, and I won't use that word tonight, but I strongly dislike kitty cats. You can have one if you want. You can have all you want. You can have all kinds of them if you want. It's up to you. You can be an old lady with a bunch of cats at your house if you want. I don't like them. I don't like them because they can't make up their mind if they want to go out the door or not. They'll meow at the door. You open the door, and the dumb thing just stands there and looks at you like, should I come in or should I not? The, the cat looks at you like, and he says, I'm God, and you're not. And I'll come in when I want to. And I'll go out when I want to. And you'll hold the door there until I get ready to go outside. Sometimes Norma's not looking. I go, boom. Bow. I just help him make a decision. He's going to go out anyway. I said, behold, he comes quickly. He's like Jesus. Right? My son Caleb likes cats. And I told him when he bought his own house, he could have as many as he wanted. We only have one. And my wife stole it. I'll tell you later, but she really stole that cat. And we brought it back, and then the cat didn't want to stay with the people she stole it from. They gave it back to us. But Caleb has aggravated the life out of me. And so he calls me this morning. I don't even know his number. He changed his number. And he's calling, and he's calling, and he's calling. And then he said, this is your son, Caleb. So when did you get this number? He said, listen, Dad, you're not going to be excited about this. I said, probably not. He said, you don't understand. He said, I was at a certain place, and I looked down, and there's a little bitty kitty cat. And it's freezing to death. I said, why don't you just let it die? All cats go to heaven with dogs, right? It's a little girl cat to beat it all. And he kept on and on. He'd been doing this for years, trying to get another cat. I said, I'm waiting on that one to die. We're never getting another one, son. He said, Dad, it's so pitiful. It's hungry. I said, take it to the pound. I said, our neighbor's got a big dog. Feed it to the dog. And he wearied me this morning. I was trying to get ready to come to Sunday school and be a good pastor. And then I had to fight when my son wanted another cat. The dog thinks you're God. The cat thinks it's God. He said, I promise, Dad, if you'll let me have it to Wednesday, I've got somebody. They'll come and get it Wednesday, Dad. I promise. I said, no. He said, I promise, Dad, please, Dad. I said, no. I promise, Dad, oh, please, Daddy. I'm going to have to sit in the car with him. I said, it's your car and your cat. And he kept on and on, and I finally I said, okay. I said, litter box goes in the, in the garage. He's not allowed in the house. No more cats in the house. He's going to be in the garage till Wednesday and if Wednesday comes and he ain't gone, some of y'all going to have to come get him because he's going to the pound. But you know why he got his way? Because he wearied me. I was in a hurry. I was trying to get here to teach Sunday school. I didn't want to talk about the cat. I don't like him. And, 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 and he kept on and he kept on. And he was persistent. Do you know how many times I've told him No. In the last five years, a hundred times. No, no more cats. We're praying for the one we got to go away or die or something. No more. But, Dad, please. And because of his continual coming, he wearied me. Now, he has to go to work sooner or later. And if you come home and you got a little nice kitty cat in a little box at your house, don't come to my house. And ask me no questions. Amen. But do you understand the point I'm trying to make to you? That when you come before God, who is in control of everything, 
and you begin to petition God for your family that's lost and you begin to petition God for your spouse that's lost and you begin you know here's what I do when I I know you don't ever have no financial problems and I'm, I'm proud for you but I want you to understand when when, when I don't have enough when I don't have enough month to meet the end of the month you know what I do I begin to call out to God and I say to God God I've been faithful to you in my tithing I've been faithful to you in my giving I just want to remind you God that I have been faithful and I'm asking you to move in my behalf I want you to understand this tonight if you will continue to come before God there's nobody so lost that God won't save them there's no spouse that's so far away from God that God can't help there's no financial situation that God can't make happen amen amen they may be on drugs but don't faint they may be on alcohol but don't faint they may be vile and mean but don't faint and don't worry just pray the widow didn't sit at home worrying about the problem she approached the only one that could help her. And if you got a problem that a man can solve, you really don't have a problem tonight. Worry is filling your mind with the worst things that could happen. You ever do it? Oh, I got a pain in my back. Oh, I got a cancer. You ever see people like that? My Lord in heaven, my head's hurting. I must have a tumor. You know what? I refuse to live my life in fear. You know what the doctor told me? Uh, not the doctor, but the devil. They meant some doctors are devils too. But it ain't been very long ago. The devil told me, he said, everybody in your family has had cancer. And everybody almost died except every one of them died. Save one. And he said, you ain't never had it. And I said, I ain't never going to get it, David. He said, how are you so sure? I said, I don't know. But I said, if I have to walk down that road, I said, I'm not asking your permission, devil. If I have to walk it, I'll walk it with the Lord. And I won't be afraid. For my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Worries fill in your mind of what might happen. Oh, the wor- it's like chicken little and the sky is falling. Oh, my God. The sky is falling. Worry is faith in reverse. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 said, Be careful, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Paul said, Don't sit and worry. He said, Go and tell the Lord about it. 1 Peter 5 and 7, Casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. you got to understand your position in God. We were talking about it Wednesday night. I'm not coming before him as a servant, although I am his servant. I come not according to works of a servant, but I come according to the being born again and born into the family of God. And I come according to the fact that he is my father and I'm his son and I have access to him through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Four and five, and he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Lord, fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continued coming she weary me. Persistence is an important factor in prayer. George Mueller wrote these words about praying. The great point is never give up until the answer comes. I've been praying for 63 years and eight months for one man's conversion, he said. He is not saved yet, but he will be. How can, how can it be otherwise? I'm praying. George Mueller died, and the man was still not saved. But as Mueller's casket was lowered into the ground, the man repented of his sins and trusted Christ as his Savior. That's what persistent praying does. Amen. Listen, what is faith? Faith faith is a substance of things that are hoped for, but the evidence is not seen. Here's what we say to God. We say, God, let me see, and I'll believe. And God says to us, we got to believe if we're going to see. Amen. you got to look and not see anything and say, my God is able to deliver even in this circumstance. Somebody ought to give him a praise right there. 1 John 5 and 4. This is the confidence that we have 
in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And we know that he heareth us whatsoever we ask. We know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Six and seven, hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge his own elect? You know why Caleb got a cat in my garage tonight? Your child couldn't talk me into that. I love your I love your babies. But take your cat and go to your house with it. Right? It's up to you if you like changing litter boxes. And you know, and something makes me aggravated at cats. They're afraid of mice anymore. They're no good for nothing. Amen. But you know what? There's nobody else's kids in here could have talked me into that. You know why I did, you know why I did it? Because it's my stuff. You know why God's going to answer the prayer? Because of the sonship that you have. Because you belong to Him. You've been born into the family of God. Amen. Jesus asked a question. When He comes back, though, He said, Will He find faith? Are you weary and well doing tonight? Are you at a place that you've prayed and not seen any evidence that it's going to come to pass? He said, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith. Amen. Jesus was saying that hard times will come and go, but will you continue in the faith? Amen. Will you hold on to God when it looks like there's no hope? Will you continue to pray with the same fervency? Amen. Or will you listen to what the enemy is saying to your mind? If you listen to the devil, amen, he's going to speak doubt over your situation. You know why I don't like to go to doctors? I got to go tomorrow. I know. Everybody's fussed at me. I'm going to the doctor tomorrow. Brother Jerry, if he don't come get me, that's the only reason. I'm not going to go, amen, but I'm going, you know, I don't like to go because it's all negative. All they know is what they've learned in books, amen, and they've never read the book, amen. All they know is what circumstances and situations that have happened before, and they go on that. They don't know that we serve a God that can dry up a cancer. They don't know that we serve a God that can make kidneys work again. They don't know that we serve a God that can open blinded eyes. That's I don't like to go because they have no faith and they try to tear down yours. Do you have faith that God will move in your life again? Amen. First John 5 and 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith Right in the midst of trials and tests and troubles, sorrows, we stand knowing that we are the predetermined winners. But you know something? You know why that you're in this fight you're in? Because God knew you would hold on to him in the faith. God knew that there was another generation that's coming on behind us, and they are not going to take a back seat to know. You know, our babies have been coming in here at 5.30 in the morning. When I was their age, I didn't even know there was two 5.30s in a day. But our babies have been coming in here at 5.30 in the morning, and they've been calling upon the God that answers by fire. They've been calling upon the God that is able to save to the other. Most. They've been coming together and having prayer meeting without you and without me. They don't need me and they don't need you. All they need to know that whatsoever that's born of God overcomes the world. God is calling to a life of persistence in prayer. If you don't get nothing tonight, remember this. Remember this. Somebody came in ready to give up. The Holy Ghost said, don't give up. Don't give up. Amen. We must be consistent and persistent if we're going to hear our have our prayers answered. Jesus said, if the unrighteous judge will eventually give justice, how much more will God hear us when we Pray. Verse 8, he said, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith 
Can I ask you something? Where are you at tonight? Do you believe that God can do it? Can I tell you something? I I had to learn this as a pastor. I never really meant to be one, but here we go. But when I first became pastor, I I had the hardest job. I had the hardest time just believing God for car tickets. And, and, and when a, and, a, and Brother Di, I don't know if you know this or not, but these two ream units that Brother Noe Allen put in here four years ago were still running. And I, it was a leap of faith to have to believe God for two units, not one, I had to believe for two. And do you understand that God is trying to bring you to new levels of faith to believe for more and to believe for more and to believe for more? And, and you know something? We come in this place and we just believe God for concrete. And you know what God did? God sent concrete. And then we began to pray and we just believe God for the shell. It laid out there for a year and a half, two years, but we got a shell. Then we said, you know what we need? We need wiring. And somebody said, it'll cost $10,000. Do you have it? No, but I got a God. And God will send the wiring. You know what he did? He sent the wiring. I, somebody said, we need sea rock. I said, guess what, boys? I said, the God that gave us the concrete, the God that gave us the wiring will be the God that gives us the sea rock. And you know the end of the story. And could it just be that this thing that you're trying to believe God for tonight is only a stepping stone to believe God for greater things and greater things and greater things. Could it just be that God wants a generation of people that could just believe for Him? Just walk into the halters and say, God, tonight, try it. Just walk into the altars and say, God, tonight, heal every sick body. That's what we was praying over here on another building a while ago. God, pray, God, heal every sick body. God, don't let anybody leave sick. God, don't let anybody leave bound. Don't let anybody leave lost. Could it just be that God wants you to believe for greater things than you've ever believed in? If you can believe that God sent the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, overshadowed a virgin, and she gave birth to the Son of God, and he walked a sinless life, and he died on a cross of Calvary, and the third and appointed day he arose again. You can believe all that, and you can't believe that God is wanting to save your children. You can't believe that God wants to save your spouse. Amen. Amen. Y'all, come on, hurry. I got too many notes and not enough time. Second Corinthians, watch this. Four. Said, what, watch what it says. We are troubled on every side. On every side. That preacher was texting me today. I got a list that long. Besides the other things that's... I was helping him pray about. And he said, can you believe this happening today? And can you believe this happening today? And can you believe this happening today? The scripture said, for we are troubled on every side. But he says, we're not moved by the trouble, yet not distressed. We're not worried about it. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We're persecuted, but we're not forsaken. We're cast down, but we're not destroyed. You see, you and I, we've been lied on. Our name's been cast out for evil different times. But I found out something. I found out that I went through the flood found out that when I went through the fire, he was before me. He was fire. He didn't burn me. 
Amen. You and I have been through the storms of life and made it through because of our faith in Jesus Christ. The Spirit of Christ is that one of us overcoming somebody who can't make it but I am. Just needs a little faith boost. Just a gentle reminder that the God that brought you in will be the God that brings you out. And I want you to understand, although there is no evidence that he's heard one prayer that you've prayed, not no evidence anywhere, I assure you tonight he has heard your prayer. And I assure you tonight he is dispatching angels to come in your way to look at your circumstance. More little scripture, first ten five, first Peter five and ten. This is what it says. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you've suffered a while, make you perfect, make you mature, establish, strengthen, settle. Somebody needed to know that God was hearing their prayer. Somebody needed to hear the words, don't faint tonight. Somebody needed to hear the words, stay in the faith tonight. I'm opening the altars for you. I'm opening the altar for you tonight that want to come and reaffirm to God that you've not given up on what you've been praying for. Saying, God, the enemy's trying to get me to quit. I've been discouraged about this, but I still believe that you are going to move in this situation in my life. Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? I I feel a holy God in this house tonight. I feel the presence of a holy God that wants to commune with his people. And he wants us to come back and align our faith with him and put our trust and hope in him again and not in our own abilities, not trusting in what man can do, but only trusting in what God alone can do would you come? I'd come right now. If I was praying about something and I needed God to move, I'd run down here. I'd run.
carry to God. Say, God, please fill me. God, please shower me with your power. That's all you got to do. But let me tell you something. If you don't have it, it's your own fault. Because the Bible says you have not because you ask for. So tonight, if you want that power, all you got to do is say, God, rain on me. Give me that power. Give me that power. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says, it's Jeremiah. He's on fire. Shut up in my room. Let me tell you, we need to be like that. We need to say, God, please let me have that fire like never before so that I can go out and do what you said for me to do. That's all you got to do. And just to feel that presence that God has gave us just five days into that past. We may be starting to get a little weak in our body, but let me tell you, at the end of it, it's going to be very, very worth it what God is going to do for us. And I thank God for that tonight. Uh, January the 10th, which is Friday, uh, boys will be boys. We'll be meeting here at the church at 4.30 and going to Jump Jam and having pizza. This event is free to any boy from the age of 9 to 16. Also, well, you are welcome to bring your friend and friends, and they are free. So listen, boys between the age of 9 and 16 this Friday night, we're literally meeting here at the church at 4.30 to go to Jump Jam totally free. So if you have any questions, you can see uh, Pastor Charlie or Pastor, excuse me, Pastor Matt. Either one of those can give you more details on that. Let's just thank God for what he's done here. And I give him a clap. Just give him one more. It is so sweet tonight. Let me tell you, if you can't feel that there's something wrong, you need to come to the altar. You need to say, God, what is wrong with me that I can't feel this tonight? It is so sweet. And with that being said, let's stand and go before the Lord in prayer. Dear precious Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, God, for what you've done here tonight, God. We thank you, God, for what you're going to do for us this year, God. We thank you, God, that five days into this fast, we've had this sweet spirit, this sweet aroma in your house tonight, Father. God, I pray, help us to give us the strength to go through the rest of the fast, God. I pray, God, that you'll help us, that we can see what you need us to do, God. Help us that we can draw closer to you during this fast, Father. And, God, I pray, God, that you help us that we can go out, we can shower our faith more with people, God. And I pray that we'll just let people see the love that we have for you, God. And show them your love so that they'll want to be your child, God. And I pray, God, that you'll help us that we'll come back Wednesday night at 7 o'clock at your appointed time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.